Hey, how's it going there, folks? Welcome back here to a Tuesday, May 14th, 2024. It is about uh, 8.55 a.m. here, California time. Latest activity here on the Earthquake 3D Globe shows a 1.4 into the region of Alaska. Did see some movement up and down the uh, plate boundary here in the last 24. We'll check that out here shortly. But, uh, man, goodness, it's the sunspot that keeps giving out here. We've seen another X flare last night. Um, from the far side sunspot now, 3664 uh, is the culprit. Or uh, Hold on, let me bring this up. There we go. 3664, that is the sunspot of the recent source of a lot of CME activity, a lot of flaring, and the second largest flare of the solar cycle so far. Uh, a look at the latest magnetogram image shows that it is out of sight here, no longer visible at all on the earth facing side of the sun and we are left with quite a few disorganized sunspots here really not capable of producing any significant flaring um you know there's there's it may look like there's a lot out here but looking at the complexity they all look fairly stable and i guess if i had to pick one if i really had to pick one and you twist my arm i would probably pick this area right here uh to watch for some development and some further flaring but that's about it Aside from that, most of the sunspots fairly stable. And uh, there is that X flare that popped off from last night. Looks like it's an X 1.2. Um, you know, I, I think that makes number 10 uh, as far as X flares go from this sunspot, which is uh, a pretty significant number. Quite a few M flares in there as well. This is just over the last 48 hours of M2 plus and above. And as you can see, that sunspot was quite active, still is active. We'll watch that, though, as it comes back around the bend here in a couple weeks, see if it's still as active. Now, the flare threat level has dropped to 40%, 99% chance for a proton event. We're still seeing that due to all this flaring activity, shooting off a lot of charged protons from uh, the recent flares, mainly affecting the northern polar region there, it looks like. But uh, aside from that, uh, space weather activity has taken, uh, you know, a little turn for um, quietness but it looks as though we may see a G2 class storm here coming up uh, as we head into uh, the 18 to 2400 UTC time of May 14th so obviously it's May 14th 18 to 24 that's gonna put it uh, here in a couple hours this could be a um, not the best conditions here for the North American side of the of the um, the earth but the folks there across uh, europe area and those regions may get a little treat of some auroras later today our time with that 18 to 24 utc time like i said it's uh, uh 1500 right now almost 1600 so in a couple hours we should see things start to ramp up there across that area of the planet so mainly over here where it's starting to get dark once again they're expecting a g2 class storm again with his timing is not going to be uh all that big of a deal for us here on this side of the planet and that could persist here over the next night or two with some unsettled conditions but we'll continue to keep an eye on that really not expecting anything major but that's what they're forecasting their g2 up to a g2 class storm all right earthquake activity a little bit of movement popping off down here in the southern pacific ocean this morning a 5.4 into uh, one of these fracture zones out here quite a few fracture zones out in this area of the world aside from that last 24 hours of earthquake activity that's uh looks like to be the largest one so far not a whole lot of movement happening out here in the last 24 hours uh, obviously we got some movement in the typical zones out here new zealand did see a 4.4 uh, looks like about four o'clock this morning or so underneath the north island 51 kilometers deep uh, still watching this area because they have been seeing quite a bit of deeper movement underneath the north island recently uh, later today we'll check out an interesting article article put out there about the hikarangi subduction zone this article was put out uh, a day or so ago talking about the hazards and the potential uh, catastrophic damages that would take place following a uh, well 9.1 earthquake out here along that hikarangi subduction zone uh, also didn't get a chance to show the viewer 
sent in auroras. We'll do that later today as well. It's just been a uh, last couple days been pretty busy here with the last week or so of school and um, everything else that's going on here in terms of space weather. So there's some of that typical activity out here across the board today. A lot of this from yesterday around Taiwan. Uh, some movement up here into the northern Mariana Trench, although that's from yesterday as well. So overall general earthquake activity today has been on the limited side. Not a whole lot popping here in Southern Cal. There's a little swarming going on here that we've seen late last night and early this morning that uh, looks like that has migrated here from that region of interest here yesterday or the past couple days we've seen a swarm here south of the border with uh, quite a few fours and threes out here as well. It looks like that's starting to migrate a little bit up north here towards the Brawley Seismic Zone, which of course extends into the San Andreas Fault, the southern branch here. This is the area that you know, a lot of people think is going to produce the uh, big one, and it is. 8.1 is what's expected out here when this thing decides to pop. A little bit of movement here on the uh, San Bernardino Mountains area as well, around the uh, southern branch. So we'll continue to watch that. Still keeping an eye on it. Uh, movement around Mount Rainier. A couple earthquakes right up at the summit region. These uh, are pretty shallow earthquakes there. Looks like a 1.3 and a 0.8. Nothing of a abnormal activity in terms of volcanic movement, just a little earthquake activity. Everything still sits green up there uh, across the board for all volcanoes. But let's go check that uh, Mount Rainier out real quick, see what's going on with the latest seismograph stations here and whatnot. Uh, let's key this up here. There's some of that earthquake activity centered, again, right up at the summit area. That station is offline. The station is operational, but really not uh, at the summit area. It does look like there's some earthquake activity out here. It's going to be these darker readings on the graph and a couple over here as well. Some of this other interference, uh, I don't think that's earthquake activity. Let me check out the trimmer map here, see if they got a better view of any seismograph stations here. This used to work, so I'm not for sure why it's offline. Yeah, image not found. Previous day not found either. Um, what about this one up here? Hello. Are we functionable today? Well, that took a little while, but at least it's working. So there's some of the earthquake activity showing up. Uh, a handful of it. Looks like some smaller quakes in there as well. So... We'll continue to watch it. You know, either way, these volcanoes periodically go through little earthquake uh, events. Not a big earthquake event, but some earthquake activity here in the last 24 hours. And for the Yellowstone area, things look pretty quiet there, but let's just double check. I want to make sure, because I've skipped these guys before when I thought it was pretty quiet and they were having a big earthquake swarm, but things look pretty quiet out here for now uh, across the area. Hawaii, really not seeing uh, anything major going on here. Uh, one movement quake up at the Mauna Loa area, at the summit 1.9. Aside from that, minimal earthquake activity here today. Still watching that region for some uh, eruptive events here uh, with the ongoing somewhat elevated. It's declined here in the last few days so far as earthquake activity goes, but uh, we'll continue to watch that area. Iceland as well. Got about 107 earthquakes out here. And, you know, got to keep an eye on this because we're starting to see more earthquakes scattered out and about everywhere, including down here across this Grindavik area, the community uh, that is south of the most recent eruptive activity there. Uh, so let's go check out the Alive from Iceland site. See if we got anything out here on the surface going on. Doesn't look like it. Still got some volcanic gases, but no signs of an eruption yet. Things are quite elevated underneath this area in terms of that inflation and uh, it's just a matter of time here folks before we see things really kick up uh, this update was put out here today it looks like they're just uh you know chatting about the increased probability of a new eruption around the area they're stating the most likely area is going to be around the craters area where we're seeing where we last seen our most recent eruption activity but obviously 
you know, there could be signs of a new magma intrusion event somewhere else. I'm thinking more down south. So we'll continue to keep an eye on that. As far as uh, severe weather goes, that's all off on the east here. Slight risk for some severe weather. Uh, a little 5% chance down there in Florida for tornado activity. Most of the event today is going to be some wind and some, some hail. Not super large hail, but uh, a little bit of hail out there in those regions today. Uh, with those severe thunderstorm chances. Aside from that, folks, seismograph stations all look pretty quiet. The live stream is up and running. It went down suspiciously again about 3-something in the morning here my time. I don't think it's funny. I mean, somebody else thinks it's funny out there because they always choose a specific time. It's not my internet. It's, uh, uh, I don't know. Maybe it is my internet. Maybe somehow they're putting a block on it, preventing the packets from uploading to the server. I don't know, but... Uh, it just it gets a little annoying after a while when I have to, you know, restart the stream continuously like this. But that's what I will do. All right, have a good one, folks. Enjoy your Tuesday. We'll catch you guys back out here a little bit later. We'll cover that New Zealand potential and also a look at the viewer sent in auroras over the weekend. Have a good one. Take care, folks.